Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm out here at the range today with the original early, the, like the first pattern of Stemple slash BRP STG 7645. There's a lot of name involved in this gun. This is a receiver tube set up as a fun recreational machine gun. And so what would be involved in that? Well, you want to have a lot of ammo on hand, so it's set up to take Suomi 71 round drum magazines. And you want to be able to make that nice and controllable. Uh, so it's got a bipod on the end. We've got a nice HK stock on it, HK pistol grip on it. This should be very pleasant to actually shoot. Now, in the sort of quasi heavy submachine gun role like this, uh, it's not without precedent. You do also have occasionally guns like the ZK383, uh, submachine gun, nine millimeter submachine guns fitted out with integral bipods. Uh, and I figured rather than just do kind of some shooting and shooting handling reactions to it, I actually put a target up. Now we only have a 50 yard range today, but I have put a paper target out there at 50 yards and I wanna see how tight of a group I can keep on it with a bipod mounted heavy submachine gun. So let's find out. That's better. All right, are we ready? do short controlled bursts glasses fog up from the humidity out here well that's a little disappointing that's the end of the ammo in the drum i knew it wasn't full but i thought it was more full than that what do you think, camera guy? Should we shoot some more or should we go take a look at the target right now? Look at the target. All right, let's go take a look. Well, that's not too shabby for full auto. Uh, it is not that many bullet holes though. That's, sorry. I really thought there was more than that left in that drum. Um, this is of course a very ad hoc target because I wasn't planning on doing this today. All right, let's put a new drum in the gun and see if we can just cut the center out of that uh, cardboard box. All right, this one is completely full. So. I think my position's not quite as good this time because it feels like the gun's pulling side to side as I'm firing bursts. But I don't want to cheat. Like, firing two or three round bursts would make this really easy. I want to try and do it in longer bursts. <laughs> well, uh, take a look at the target there. You may notice something's missing. I uh, knocked the cardboard aiming point clean off the target but we can still aim it more or less the center. That's not cheating, that's a long burst. Okay, and that's 71 rounds. Let's go see how that group looks. All right, so uh, 30 round burst, that kind of opens up a little bit, as you can see. But you know what? I think basically every shot was still on paper. I've got a couple that are close to the edge, but you saw the first group. Short bursts. That's what makes this sort of thing a fun... Well, you know what? Honestly, it makes it a fun recreational tool because hitting what you aim at is fun. But it also gives it that little bit of military practicality in, in the form of guns like the ZK-383 that were actually military-issued submachine guns with bipods. It's not really capable of suppressing fire, sort of, in the way of a machine gun. But having a bipod and being able to deliver a lot of, of bullets in a nice, tight, compact, directed area, that can have utility, even if they are little dinky 9mm bullets. Oh, a cool concept and uh, an extremely comfortable gun to shoot. I didn't even mention that because, I didn't really, frankly, it was, it was so nice to shoot, I didn't even really think about it. Uh, issues that it might have. Uh, pistol grip's nice, stock's nice, um, 
the drop in the G3 stock actually fits the Suomi site reasonably well. The modern ones that uh, BRP is making on this pattern have Picatinny rail on them instead of Suomi iron sights. Uh, so you can put red dots on them and man, that'd make it you know, an order of magnitude more fun and cooler. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.